we will be looking at three key hormones that influence your ability to either lose weight or gain weight. If we are meeting for the first time, my name is Dan Zatarski. I'm the pharmacist here at MD Custom RX in Brookfield. This YouTube channel is supplying you with information on healthy living to live your best optimal life. Estrogen specifically has a real issue, especially uh, in women, if they get too much. Ultimately what happens with estrogen is that estrogen will create uh, essentially more fat cells or fat cells to become more uh, larger in size. The problem with that is the fat cell will then actually act as part of the endocrine system in creating more estrogen. So those adipose, that adipose tissue or adipose cells will in, in fact create more estrogen in the body which will create uh, the ability for fat cells, adipose tissue, to store more fuel, if you will, store more fat, and that vicious cycle continues over and over. So if, you, if you're, especially for women, struggling with weight loss, I encourage you to do two things with your sex hormones. Have your estradiol level checked, make sure that is in the proper level, and make sure it is balanced out with progesterone. A lot of times when we do testing here at the pharmacy, we end up seeing that maybe a woman doesn't need estrogen or they don't have an excess of estrogen. Oftentimes they don't have enough, but it's out of balance with progesterone. And so we actually have to look at both estrogen and progesterone together uh, to make sure that that patient's hormones are optimized for weight loss. The second sex hormone, and this is mainly for men, but making sure we have enough testosterone. If we don't have enough testosterone, generally speaking, we can't build enough lean muscle tissue and our metabolism just doesn't work to its peak performance. We don't burn fuel uh, as, as efficiently as we should. So that's very important. Okay, so that's uh, the first hormone or set of hormones, I should say, that I encourage every patient, if they are having a struggle losing weight, to have those levels tested. The second hormone that we want to look at is thyroid hormone. Thyroid hormone is basically setting your thermostat in your body. Now, it's definitely more complex than that, but the way that I think about it, thyroid hormone sets the temperature in your body. It's how fast does your body burn through macronutrients. Looking at thyroid hormone though, there's a lot of discrepancy as what is the optimal range for your, what's called the TSH, the thyroid stimulating hormone that's released from your pituitary. Now in my book and in many functional medicine practitioners, ideally that TSH should not be above two. Now we can even say maybe even two and a half. My point is this, if your TSH is three, three and a half, four, I encourage you to have your physician, your provider, look further into more extensive thyroid testing, looking at your T3, looking at your T4, uh, ruling out Hashimoto's or autoimmune disease. So again, at the end of the day, make sure the thermostat of your body or your thyroid gland is functioning properly. It is critically important in my opinion. The third hormone, this pancreatic hormone, we all know this, it's insulin. I wanna make sure if you do nothing else, have your fasting insulin level tested. If we're not testing fasting insulin, we really don't know how hard our body is working to maintain our blood glucose. Most patients that I meet with have tested their blood glucose and it's in the normal range, but how much work does your pancreas have to do to manage your blood glucose? So please look at fasting insulin levels. Next time you go to visit your doctor, have them draw that level. Fasting insulin is so important. If your insulin is above a certain amount, again, optimal is between two to six, but if you are continually having to produce insulin every time you eat a meal, generally speaking, your, your body is not designed to consume so many carbohydrates that ultimately the body will release too much insulin into the blood. Now we've all seen this happen. We eat a meal, a large carbohydrate meal, and after that meal is done, yeah, we might have energy for an hour or so or two hours, but then we crash. 
What ultimately is happening is the pancreas is producing too much insulin and that insulin shuttles all of those carbohydrates into our cells and now we feel tired again because that glucose, those carbohydrates are gone and we are unable to use those as quick energy. Insulin, the way I think of insulin is, is like this. When a carbohydrate meal is consumed, insulin is going to take that carbohydrate and try to drop it off into a muscle cell. If, our, if we're not exercising, we're basically not moving around enough, that muscle cell is basically going to reject the carbohydrate from entering into the cell. So then the insulin says to the body, and of course I'm making up a story here, but the way that I think about it is then the insulin is going to go to the liver and say, okay, the glucose, the, the muscle cells don't want the glucose. So I'm going to take that glucose or carbohydrate and I'm going to store it in the liver as glycogen. And that's great when we're fasting and we need glucose, the liver can produce glucose by breaking down glycogen. Great survival mechanism. The problem is we tend to overeat, we don't fast. There's multiple reasons where basically the liver is full of glycogen all the time. So back to my story, you've got insulin, you've released it after a meal, your body's taking that glucose, that carbohydrate that you just metabolized, the muscle cells don't want it, the liver doesn't want it because it's full of glycogen already, and so it really has nowhere else to go. So guess what happens to that carbohydrate? It gets dropped off at our wonderful, our wonderful adipose tissue. So those cells just keep getting bigger and bigger and bigger and bigger. They really will accept all carbohydrates no matter what. And that ultimately ends as fat. So bottom line, uh, to basically fi finish up this story is simply this. Glucose will ultimately turn into fat because if it's not burnt up as energy in the muscle tissue or if it's not stored as glyco glycogen in the liver, our body's gonna take insulin uh, and allow it to drop glucose off at fat cells. Now those fat cells are actually going to turn that glucose, that carbohydrate, into fat. And so I encourage you if you're consuming more than 30 grams is usually my cutoff, 30 grams of carbohydrates per meal, that's typically too much. Hopefully you've learned a few things about these three key hormones. Again, it's the sex hormones, estrogen, progesterone, testosterone. It's the thyroid hormone. It's your TSH that you have to measure, uh, and also your T3, T4, and then of course your pancreatic hormone. Get that fasting insulin level tested. In next week's video, we're going to be looking at other hormones and other factors that can contribute to weight gain and your inability to lose weight. We'll look at cortisol levels and how that influences weight. We'll be looking at micronutrients. We'll look at, be looking at different macronutrients. And we'll also be looking at different detoxification pathways because if your body can't get rid of toxins, it's going to have a real hard time getting rid of extra weight. Till next time, thank you very much. Thank you for tuning in. Again, as always, if you found value in today's video, please subscribe. Hit that notification button. We are again going to be trying to put more videos out to give you information on how to live a more optimal, healthy life. Thanks again. Have a good night.